Hi, Des the Vet here from Gym Dog, presenting another episode of our A Pet's Life podcast. Uh, today, because it's the weekend of Crufts, I want to depart from my usual format of podcasting with John Dunn of KFM, and I'm going to podcast solo and discuss the topic of brachycephalic dogs. And the reason why is because brachycephalic dogs are really topical. Uh, there's a Guardian article today in relation to a winner of Crufts, which I'd like to talk to you about on this podcast. In case you're wondering, the term brachycephalic refers to dogs with what the Americans call a squash face. Now, breeds that typically spring to mind, the ones with, that are, if you like, the most brachycephalic would be uh, Boston Terriers, French Bulldogs, British bull Bulldogs, and the all too common, lovable and much loved breed of Pug. So they would be the four that are considered, in my view, the most brachycephalic. There are other brachycephalic dogs, boxers, shih tzus, and so on. Now, think about these breeds. They've been bred for a particular look, a particular image that us humans find cute, find adorable, the large eyes, the wide face, uh, unfortunately, a very flat nose, okay? Often with very narrow nostrils. So these breeds have a collection of abnormal physical findings which result in uh, great suffering and a lot of veterinary problems throughout their lives and these breeds have come to the attention of vets over recent years because of a collection of difficult physical deformities. First of all, their eyes are too wide, too set in their heads, shallow in their heads, the drainage from their teardrops is inadequate, that's the first thing. Uh, secondly, their noses are too squashed and they often have an abnormal nasal fold which can result in dermatitis. Thirdly, they have very narrow nostrils. Uh, fourthly, they have a very short nasal cavity and unfortunately, fifthly, they also often have a, an elongated self palate and a very narrow larynx. Now, these constellation of difficulties result in a syndrome which vets refer to as BOAS, B-O-A-S, which stands for Brachycephalic Obstructive Airway Syndrome. Um, Brachycephalic Obstructive Airway Syndrome is, is, is a, a, an abnormality requiring surgery. Um, and unfortunately that surgery is becoming more and more common. So why am I talking about this on the weekend of Crufts? Well the reason why unfortunately is because in spite of the fact that the British Veterinary Association issued very detailed and very good and very ethical guidelines within the last year um, about breeding traits or breeding characteristics in particular which, which, which vets want applied to the breeding of French Bulldogs we have found the Crufts that a French Bulldog with particularly abnormal characteristics has won best of breed and unfortunately has also won best of its utility group. Um, why is this a problem? It's a problem because this little dog, lovely cute dog that he is, he's an old fashioned example of his breed with uh, the, the, unfortunately the undesirable deformities. Now as a double Crufts winner he's a dog who's going to be bred from and these traits are unfortunately going to be perpetuated in contravention, as I say, of guidelines issued only a year ago by the British Veterinary Association. Now, just to back up why I believe these guidelines, these new breeding guidelines, which particularly need to be applied to, as I say, the four breeds in question, Frenchies, British Bulldogs, Pugs um, and, and Boston Terriers, they would be the main four. I want to show you some x-rays of what a brachycephalic dog looks like on x-ray versus what a normal dog looks like. Looking at some x-rays here folks, um, a lovely superimposed image of a brachycephalic breed and a normal dog. Uh, two lateral or side view of uh, skull x-rays perfectly exhibiting uh, the abnormal characteristics that these dogs have had bred into them over the years. And I'm just going to use my pen as a pointer to illustrate the, illustrate illustrate the findings. So the f f four or five simple points I'm, I'm going, to, going to illustrate to you. First of all, the lower jaw of a normal dog, nicely elongated, plenty of room for chewing, plenty of room for dental development, plenty of room for the tongue. Versus the brachycephalic dog, in this case, this is a pug. He has a very short lower jaw, his teeth are compressed or overcrowded, uh, the incisors in particular, uh, and there's far less room for the tongue to, uh, to do its job and for the tongue to sit. That's the first point. Second point is we're going to look at the nasal cavity. 
Um, in the case of the normal dog, we have a very wide, lengthy, spacious nasal cavity with lots of room for airflow and lots of room for dust particles to be picked up. This is the normal dog. The abnormal dog, the brachycephalic pug, has an almost non-existent nasal cavity. As you can see, his nostrils, which will be somewhere here, the distance between the nostril um, and uh, the pharynx, as we call this area, is extremely short. Whereas the pharynx to nostril distance in the normal dog is four, three, four inches. In this case, probably less than one inch in a pug. That's the second point. Third point to illustrate, you can see nicely that the normal dog is his globe, which is the cavity where his eye sits, nicely set up in his head, plenty of room for the eye to do its job, plenty of room for drainage of the tear ducts down through the nostrils. In the case of the pug, the eye socket is set very down, very far forward, and very close to the nose far too close to the nose, indicating in this case that the tear duct will be very short, meaning the tears will be running down this dog's face, causing skin infection, okay? A couple of other things I could probably illustrate to you when we look at the pug. You can see an extremely narrow airway, little space here where his larynx, where his soft palate will be positioned, very, very narrow. So all in all, we're looking at uh, one dog, which is as nature intended, Another dog which has been misshapen and misbred by humans over generations to such an extent that uh, his body shape is no longer fit for purpose. So folks, the point about this is that we're looking at Crufts once again awarding prizes to little dogs whose anatomy, whose body shape, whose breeding by humans is not fit for purpose. When I say not fit for purpose, what I actually mean is it's not fit for this poor dog to have a reasonable quality of life. And this is why the British Veterinary Association issued guidelines last year only for these breeds that are the most affected by these abnormalities. The breeds that are the most affected, vets like myself, like the BVA representatives, we want to see these bad characteristics bred out. This would mean pick the ones that have the better faces, pick the ones that have the better airway, pick the ones that have the better ocular drainage and breed from these and make these the new desirable uh, the new desirable types and award the ones with the better the better facial shapes the ones that are more fit for purpose award these the prizes at the show and select for traits that are not going characteristics and body shapes and face shapes that are not going to cause lifelong suffering for these dogs uh, so let's have a look at the dog in question and you'll see exactly what i mean so folks i'm just looking at a picture of elton and following the article in the Guardian, obviously I haven't been to Crufts this year myself, okay, but it's making the news today, as I say, on the Guardian. Um, very notable influencer, a well-known vet, has been online this morning, and she's written a terrible day for dogs. I'm gutted. This French bulldog, with no discernible nostrils and an almost concave face, has won not just best of breed at Crufts today, but also the utility group. So he's a double winner at Crufts. You have a collection of judges there who, who've, who've handed out those X in defiance of the best health guidelines given to them. So I'm looking at Elton here, um, perfect little model, little version of his breed. I have the same picture from here, folks, that you can see um, on your screens as, as, as we talk about him. And as I say, he's a lovely, cute little, uh, a beautiful little model of a dog named Elton. Um, has the lovely, cute bat ears. Um, he's a gorgeous little dog, but I have to say as a vet, I, I need to point out the difficulties he has that are going to make his, his, his life very difficult as he gets older. So first of all, Elton typically has the very wide eyes. He has a very shallow face. Um, he has very shallow tear ducts and very shallow tear glands, meaning that his eyes are going to, uh, he's going to suffer from conjunctivitis because he's going to have difficulty with tear production all his life. That's the first thing. Secondly, um, he has a very uncomfortable nasal fold. Um, that's a very thick fold of skin, um, which guaranteed is gonna suffer from eczema between his nose and his eyes. Now, oftentimes these skin folds have to be surgically repaired as these dogs get older, but I would prefer to see dogs bred 
not for the skin fold, rather than having surgery later to correct the skin fold. The third point about poor Elton is, Elton has, as I say, as the, vet, the other vet pointed out on Twitter, Elton has almost no nostrils. He has a very squashed nose, he has a nose on him like a little chinchilla or something. And he has almost no nostrils. Uh, and fourthly, as I look at him here, just to be able to breathe, this little guy has his mouth open. Now, dogs don't hold their mouth open, wide-mouthed like that, in kind of gaping awe or gaping wonder like a child. No, they don't. A dog should have a closed mouth. In an environment like that, where he should be on high alert, he should be looking around him. Nine dogs out of ten, they're going to have a closed mouth and they're going to be breathing through their nose. I'm looking at Elton here and I can see, plain as day, Elton can't breathe through his nose. Elton has the mouth open because he's trying to take in air. He's trying to take in oxygen. So for me, he's a typical candidate for what I describe as the BOAS, the brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome. And as I say, in defiance of the guidelines to breed these little dogs with wider faces, better nostrils, better airways, um, to encourage future generations of these dogs to be healthier, right? We shouldn't be awarding the likes of poor little Alton, best in breed or best in his own utility group. So look at, as, as, as listeners of this, po this podcast and as, as dog owners and dog lovers like myself, uh, me to you as a vet, what would I like to say to you about what we can do about this? Well, a few things. So look, in conclusion, folks, what can you do about it? If you're concerned about the prevalence of brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, right? If you would like to see brachycephalic dogs become healthier over the generations, what you can do about it is a few simple things, okay? First of all, please don't buy them. That's the first thing I would say to you, okay? One of the ways to make the breeding of these characteristics uh, less prevalent is don't encourage it. Don't encourage the breeding of these dogs by giving the big money that the breeders of these dogs are asking. Don't buy one. That's the first thing, right? Secondly, if you do own one, please make sure that you keep your lovable pug, French Bulldog, Mastiff, Shih Tzu, Boxer, keep your brachycephalic dog as fit and as light as you can and as healthy as you can for its lifestyle, for its entire lifetime, because if you do keep these dogs fit, it has been shown that don't let them gain weight. There's less of a chance of all of these undesirable uh, characteristics uh, causing problems in later life. Thirdly, what can you do? Write to Crufts. Tell them your displeasure. Inform Crufts of our displeasure as dog lovers that these breeds are being encouraged and are being perp perpetuated by being given prizes, right? And lastly, folks, if you are a breeder, if you have one of these dogs, if you would like to breed from your French Bulldog, then please outcross it. The simplest way to avoid the next generation of French Bulldogs or Pugs, the simplest way to avoid these dogs from being unhealthy and struggling to breathe in the next generation is outcross them with another small breed that has a better, better facial features, a better anatomy. Um, for instance, I've seen lovely Pugaliers cross a Pug with a Cavalier, cross a Pug with a Beagle, right? What you're going to get then is, you're going to get a little dog with a lot of the desirable features of the French Bulldog with, and for the Pug without the undesirable characteristics of the overly squashed face. So that's the first thing you can do today, folks, is to take these things on board. Write to Crufts. Tell them as a dog lover that you're unhappy, please. Uh, Secondly, if you're thinking of getting a dog, don't buy one. Don't encourage the breeding of these. And thirdly, if you do own one and you want to breed from it, then please outcross your brachycephalic dog with a dog that's not brachycephalic. Thanks, folks. If you want to find out more, continue uh, subscribe on petslife.ie, on Spotify, to our podcast, and please do listen again next week.